guys, my name's Heather Orchard. For those who don't know me, I am a mother of one and a stepmother of two. And today's video is going to be pretty insightful. It's going to be about child custody, child support, and mediation. I kind of broke it down into like four easy steps for you guys. So you guys can kind of see how this process goes and easy ways that you can do it yourself as well. So um, the first step for filling out like child custody and child support is um, there is an online website through your state that you can get on, log in, and um, you have to download all the paperwork and fill it out, which is very tedious. It takes a lot of time. You have to have all your statements and putting that all in so it makes sense and that it's correct. Um, a lot of the times this is not the best way to go about it because you're going to get it sent back and it's going to go back and forth because there might be one or two things or a couple things that are wrong here and there. Um, what we did was uh, my husband Nate, he signed up for a class. Um, I don't know, it was probably like $100. But you sign up for this class and then you go and meet with uh, somebody who is educated and works in the field of putting together like child custody and child support. So that's what he did. He went in and he had someone sit down. They did all the math, they went through everything, put everything together. Um, and you can, another thing you can do is um, you can try to hire an attorney. Um, this is something that a lot of people do, it's pretty normal. Uh, if you can't afford that, you can always do the other ways. And it's not that we didn't want to hire an attorney. We just, we Nate has done it a couple of times, so he kind of knows what he's doing. And by doing the class as well, he learned a lot about how to do it himself. Um, we didn't feel like we needed to hire an attorney, so we didn't get one. And so after you hire an attorney, if you can't come to um, agreement on anything, uh, the next option would be mediation, which uh, we did have to go through mediation every time uh, because back and forth and back and forth, we couldn't come to an agreement that was fair or probably not fair because nothing's fair, but we couldn't come to an agreement that would work for the best option for the kids and for both parents. So we went to mediation. Um, if you can't settle in mediation, your next step is going to be you're going to go to court. And nobody wants to do that. It's not fun. It's hard on your family. It's hard on the kids. So try to settle it yourselves through mediation. Because everything costs money and everything costs time and energy. And let's just be adults and try to figure this out ourselves <laughs> so you don't have to take it that far. So just a couple key points is every state is different with their child support laws. Some benefit only one spouse, some benefit both spouses, and some even look to benefit the future children and spouses of those who come later. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. That's pretty rare. It doesn't happen a lot. What do I mean by this? I'm kind of reading through some of the notes that I wrote down. Um, so I can explain this the best way I can to you guys. So usually one spouse is benefited, which is usually the mother. Child support that benefits both spouses is usually when both parents um, split the children 50-50 and both make a similar income. So that's not very common. Um, we don't live in a perfect world. It takes a lot of the excess like fighting and arguing and um, splitting this and splitting that it makes I feel like that would make it so much easier So anybody that does that I would love to know no. support that benefits the future children and spouses is rare and Can be seen as fair or unfair based on the circumstances. So I know in New Jersey uh, so once you get remarried um, Not only is your income looked at but your spouse's income is looked at and also the future children that come into play um, because if you do think about it, if you are getting remarried, you do have another person that you are trying to take care of and trying to keep a family with. If you have another child, that child is not only your responsibility, but it's your full-time responsibility as if you're splitting the custody of the ch other children that you've had in a previous marriage. So, I mean, a lot of people have a lot to say about this. And I don't know 
from experience what that's like. So I can't really say too much. I think that's a great idea and a great concept. I think that that actually kind of puts less stress and pressure on whoever is paying child support because, I mean, you do have to think about it when other things come into your life. When you have another spouse and you have a more kids, it's, it's a lot. And sometimes you might not be able to afford the child support that you're paying or that you were paying before. Um, so I just, I, I would like to know more about that and know if anybody's ever experienced that. What about the other children that come along? The other children that come along into your life after divorce and remarriage, um, they're your full-time expectations, uh, you, you're reliable for them in your new marriage, and in child support terms, these new children and their expenses to care for are and should be deducted to you. Um, uh, so, I mean, that is something that is in legal terms in the pa paperwork. So if you do have another child and you're supporting that child 100% um, because you have them 100% of the time, um, that is actually a deduction. So this can be difficult for an ex to understand because they're now receiving less money than they were before. Uh, they might feel resentful towards you because now you have another kid and they might think that you're trying to take your responsibility out of it and not support your children, which is not the case. Um, it doesn't mean that any of the children are being thought less of or taken care of. It's just that you have one more responsibility and... Um, every child needs to be treated equally. That's just kind of life. It means now that there is one more child in the picture to take care of, as well as it is your responsibility to take care of all of your children equally. What you have to remember about a divorce and a remarriage is it isn't about you anymore. You need to remove yourself from the equation and just put the children first. If one party doesn't agree, then it is your decision how you want to pursue this cause any further. Sometimes it takes hiring a lawyer or going through mediation to solve. Just remember that there's a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings, and selfishness involved in child support changes. Um, and most of the time, one parent is going to feel like they're the one that's being hurt, they're the one that's taking all the blame, they're the one that's... Um, you know, having all these responsibilities to take over, but that's not really the case. The case is this is life. This is what you didn't know you signed up for, but this is what happens when you get divorced and you get remarried. You have more children, you have a bigger family. Everybody has to come together and come to terms to what is best for your children and what is going to be best for your family. And you just kind of have to resolve it and figure out what you're going to do and we need to be adults and we need to take our emotions, our feelings, our expectations from our insides, inside ourselves, and remove that and just put the children first, um, you know, and that doesn't mean your children from a previous marriage, that means that all the children should be treated equally. And that's kind of my overview on child custody and child support and mediation. Um, if you have any questions, if you need any help, uh, if I didn't explain anything that great or I didn't go into detail about something, uh, please let me know because I would love to help you guys out. So, well, thanks for watching and have a blessed day.